It is really awesome to be here in Music City. Literally one of the founding birthplaces of American music is Tennessee, and in particular Nashville. Country music is one of the original American art forms, and it's exciting to be here. Today, this is super exciting to have Natalie here today with us. Natalie Madai is a legal fellow from the National Publisher Music Publishers Association. You did better at it than I did, Joe. She's going to talk to us about how labels and publishers can make more money and reduce overhead, basically discussing the idea of why we need to reform sync licensing now. The National Music Publishers Association is the largest U.S. music publishing trade association with over 3,000 members. Its mission is to protect, promote, and advance the interests of the music's creators. The NMPA is the voice of both small and large music publishers, the leading advocate for publishers and their songwriting partners in the nation's capital and in every area where publishers do business. The goal of the NMPA is to protect its members' property rights on the legislative, litigation, and regulatory fronts. Ladies and gentlemen, Natalie Madej. Okay. Um, good morning, everyone. Good so, morning. Oh, hi. <laughs> um, I'm pleased to have the opportunity to speak on behalf of the National Music Publishers Association at this karaoke summit, and I look forward to learning a lot more about uh, the karaoke industry and the community of you all here um, during my time here today. So, as Dr. Drax uh, just told you, my name is Natalie Madai, and I'm currently serving as a legal fellow at the NMPA. And uh, he gave you a brief uh, summary of what we do, but I, I just wanted to start out by giving you all some more information about what is NMPA, who we are, and what we do. Um, so NMPA is the leading trade organization representing music publishers and their songwriting partners. Um, we have over 3,000 members, and we represent our members in the legislative process, in litigation, and in the public eye. Okay, so in addition to representing our member interests, we also own the Harry Fox Agency, um, which collects and distributes mechanical royalties paid for the reproduction of compositions uh, to its affiliated publisher members. And then we also work with other important stakeholders in the music industry in proceedings before the Copyright Royalty Board um, in order to establish mechanical royalty rates under Section 115 of the Copyright Act. So these proceedings help ensure that all music publishers and their songwriting partners receive fair compensation for the use of their work. Um, more recently, NMPA also represented the music publishing industry and their late fee settlement with the recording industry. Um, working with a major label such as uh, Sony and Warner to um, secure payments to publishers for pending and unmatched royalties. So to date, with that program, we have collected and distributed over $247 million to publishers as part of that program. Um, aside from that sort of thing, we're also very engaged with Congress, the administration, the courts, and the Copyright Office on all matters pertinent to the music publishing industry. So while we represent all publishers on all music publishing and public policy issues, karaoke is a growing industry, and while we don't know a whole lot about the karaoke industry right now, we're looking forward to learning more about it. Um, so, like I just said, um, <laughs> It's really great that I'm here today because everyone in my office, we're all really into karaoke, but no one, we haven't really sat down and start to, started to focus on it yet. So this should be a really good learning experience for me that I can take back to the office so we can work on some of your guys' issues. Um, so first I wanted to start off by talking about the next great copyright act, because this will probably impact all of you here. Um, so recently, Maria Palenti, who is the Register of Copyright, gave a speech in which she proposed comprehensive revision of the copyright law in the United States, making way for what she refers to as the next great copyright act. Um, she also released a copyright priorities report late last year, which sets forth numerous areas ripe for reform. And then more recently, um, Representative Robert Goodlatte, who serves as the chairman of the Judiciary Committee, announced that he would be conducting a series of hearings on copyright law over the next several months. So the reforms made to the copyright law could directly or indirectly impact the karaoke industry in a number of ways. Um, for example, there's going to be a movement to limit statutory damages, which could affect the ability of legal karaoke companies, like you all here, um, to stop illegal sites or activity. So with ineffective means of deterring those engaged in um, producing illegal karaoke products, it'll be a lot more difficult for you all to compete on a level playing field. So that's definitely something you guys should be aware of. 
Um, and then another proposal that could impact the karaoke industry is a plan to create a copyright small claims court. Um, so while on its face this may initially seem like a good idea for small copyright owners, it may also prove to foster frivolous claims against legitimate karaoke businesses. So um, people bringing small copyright claims against your companies um, th and that may not necessarily have a valid claim. So it could just end up being a lot more legal trouble for you all and I know that no one wants to deal with that sort of thing. So that's another thing to definitely keep an eye on. Um, and then I think what's going to be of the greatest importance to this crowd is Register Palenti's call for music licensing reform specifically. Um, so while most of the music community does not immediately think of karaoke licensing when they hear the words music licensing generally, changes in revenue streams for publishing companies, so here's 2011, this is how um, the revenue streams broke down for um, the major publishing companies. So as you can see, in 2011, this other category, which would include, I know that you guys are definitely included in sync, but also, you'll also be included in other for the video display, or for the dis lyrics display part of your products, um, and that's gonna be included in that other category. So two years ago, that was uh, making up only 3% of the industry, whereas in 2012, that grew to 5%. So, um, you know, it's, it's uh, trends change over time and everything. Karaoke is going to continue to become more and more important. So the increase in this other revenue has made alternative music uses like karaoke more important than ever. Um, so while the publishers I have spoken to have indicated that the majority of revenue that they generate through licensing for karaoke comes from traditional uses like um, the CDGs used in venues, um, the number of karaoke applications and sites on the internet can be expected to rise, as I'm sure you guys all know and are working on. Um, so as sources of revenue become more diversified and even more important to the music industry, those involved in copyright reform should be cognizant of the importance of making karaoke licensing a process that is efficient and lucrative for all parties involved. So for you guys and for the publishers. And, okay. So next I wanted to talk about um, the complications in current karaoke licensing. As I'm sure you guys are aware, um, licensing for karaoke can be extremely complicated because of the number of rights implicated. And then on my slide here, I just have uh, rights implicated by typical karaoke uses. So, you know, under the Copyright Act, um, copyright owners are granted exclusive rights, several of which are affected by karaoke uses. So, synchronization, um, karaoke is considered an audio audiovisual work, so you have to get, you know, um, a, a sync license, as you all know. Um, and also, a, the dis right to display is another separate right under the Copyright Act. So, karaoke requires uh, licensing this right to display lyrics. And then there's a reproduction right that is also implicated. So the creation of a copy of a musical work implicates the production right, reproduction right. So every time you guys um, make a new copy of your product, then that reproduction right is going to be implicated. Um, and then derivative works and public performance, those would also be covered under the Copyright Act and are things that we have to think about when licensing. Um, so since courts have determined that um, that lyrics displayed in conjunction with the sound recording qualifies as an audiovisual work rather than simply a phono record, the licensing scheme for karaoke is obviously a lot more complex than the compulsory licensing scheme that's used for CDs and digital phono record downloads, which is um, when you get music on iTunes or other on online services. Um, so this means that licensing for karaoke uh, requires procuring sync licenses and reprint licenses to display song lyrics, in addition to getting that compulsory mechanical license for phone records. Um, so because public performance rights can generally be licensed through uh, the PROs such as ASCAP, BMI, and CSAC, receiving clearance for that aspect is not terribly complicated. Um, however, karaoke product producers must also obtain sync licenses, as you guys know, and that becomes a much trickier issue for those seeking licenses. Um, so what I learned from the publishers that I spoke to in preparation for this talk was that um, generally the fees paid for um, karaoke discs include a fixing fee of, they told me, between $100 and $250 per track, plus a royalty of 10 to 20 cents per copy sold. And then they also told me that for online karaoke, publishers generally charge between 12 and 15% of revenue for the use of lyrics and music. So it seems like the fees that I've heard from publishers are fairly standard, but actually facilitating the license is where things become trickier. Um, so I wanted to talk about a few different ways that I've discussed with a number of you and with my publisher members um, of ways to make licensing more efficient. So the first 
way that I wanted to talk about. Um, oh, actually, well, before I did that, just reasons that you know we want to focus on uh, making this more efficient and easier for everyone involved is because, I mean, I'm sure many of you know, many songs remain unlicensed, which is bad for you guys because you guys are paying the licensing and bad for the publishers because we're losing money. So an ideal licensing system would be one in which the music publishers could rest assured that they're being compensated for their uses, while karaoke licensees like yourselves could rest assured that you've, you've fulfilled your legal obligations. So any sort of reform in this licensing system should strive to improve efficiencies in sync licensing um, for karaoke, as well as relieving both publishers and karaoke licensees of some of the burdens associated with issuing and procuring individual sync licenses for such a large volume of songs. Um, so clearly there's a need to establish some sort of licensing regime for karaoke in order to encourage karaoke, karaoke producers to efficiently license compositions. Um, as recently as last year, I heard that one major publisher alleged that a karaoke company had committed over 6,700 acts of copyright infringement for the sale of discs and software containing unlicensed songs owned by a publisher. So the use of unlicensed songs for karaoke is bad for all parties involved, obviously for publishers and songwriters because they're going unpaid, and then also for the people here as legitimate karaoke companies who are forced to compete with companies that refuse to play uh, by the rules. So the first um, potential change that I wanted to talk about is departmental separation. Um, so the process that is necessary to procure a sync license for a single song is typically very long. In the case of movies and television shows, that's less of an issue because uh, producers tend to license a relatively small number of songs per film or episode. So maybe if you're watching an episode of television, you might hear like three or four songs for a film, maybe up to 10. Um, however, the current process ex is extremely inefficient for karaoke for obvious reasons because you guys want to license thousands of songs at a time. So it might be beneficial to at least streamline the process internally within the publishing company's sync departments um, in order to change administrative procedures for procuring sync licenses for karaoke uses and separate um, that from those trying to procure sync licenses for film and television uses. Um, so I talked to a few publishers about this and tried to gauge their level of interest. And I know that a lot of the major publishers probably have the resources and manpower to actually do this and separate within their sync departments and make sure that there's someone just in charge of doing all of the karaoke licensing, which is great. Um, however, for some of the smaller publishers that we represent, they told me that the complete division of those two types of sync licensing may not be possible right now just due to the lack of resources with which to fund employees who would be completely devoted to karaoke licensing. So at least one publisher I spoke to, one of the smaller ones, indicated that um, they've been attempting to work with their writers to develop a list of pre-cleared songs, which I know is something that a lot of the majors do as well, so that could definitely be helpful for you all there. Um, and then compulsory licensing. So um, some had suggested that a compulsory licensing scheme should be applied to karaoke licensing. Um, I don't know if you guys are all aware of what compulsory licensing is, but basically there is a rate set by statute and then if anyone wants to use that composition, um, they're allowed to, they don't have to direct, directly negotiate with the copyright owner as long as they pay that statutory rate. Um, so some have argued that maybe we should apply something like this to karaoke uses. Um, however, the various types of karaoke offerings are really different, unlike, um, unlike you know, whenever you, you put a song on CD, that's basically going to be the same over and over again, but karaoke offerings have diversified a lot over the past few years, and so there's so many different permutations in how to sync music and images in karaoke um, that that's probably just not going to be something that publishers would ever want to do. Further, generally in the music industry, uh, publishers are totally unsupportive of compulsory licensing because we believe that music publishers should be able to negotiate rates and terms for licensing in the fair market. So compulsory licensing, probably out for now. Um, and then another option that I wanted to talk to you all today about is blanket licensing. Um, so a lot of you guys are probably already familiar with blanket licensing, at least a little bit. Um, if you know anything about karaoke venues, that's what the venue is going to have to um, receive in order to be able to play the music within their venue. Um, so a blanket license would allow like one single desig or a few designated entities to um, negotiate and collect royalties on behalf of publishers. So rather than having to negotiate individually with um, thousands of music publishers and songwriters, publishers and songwriters could appoint designated agents to act on their behalf. 
and then those designated agents could negotiate and collect royalties. Um, so right now, the music industry is proposing to Congress a piece of legislation that we call CIRA, um, and that would reform the compulsory licensing system for the reproduction um, right, which is used I mean, I guess you guys have a little bit of the reproduction right implicated, but mainly for um, CDs and digital downloads. Um, and we are thinking about trying to reform that to allow blanket licensing through designated agents um, that could collect royalties for certain types of uses. So while the same framework could be, uh, this framework would not be applicable to karaoke because it's a sync license as opposed to mechanical license. Um, the idea of de designating agents to negotiate, collect, distribute uh, sync licenses for karaoke uses might be something that you guys could be interested in because it would make things a lot more efficient, obviously. Um, one problem that publishers have noted with that, however, is that um, the vast offerings of karaoke companies makes it unlikely that this system would fit the needs of many karaoke companies because a blanket license would um, give karaoke companies the right to do use their music in one specific way, right? But it's unlikely that publishers would be willing to issue blanket licenses that would cover a wide range of uses. So since the karaoke industry, you know, um, is using music in such different ways, so some of you guys are doing it online, sometimes people can record um, what they're singing and then send it out to their friends, right? There's so many different ways um, that people are using karaoke now that it might be difficult to get this all covered on one under one blanket license. So the last thing I'm going to suggest is utilizing the Harry Fox Agency slingshot. Um, so due to the extreme complexities involved in karaoke licensing, um, it's unlikely at this point that many publishers would be interested in entering into blanket licenses, which would grant broad rights to use their songs without entering into direct licenses with karaoke companies. So for this reason, currently the best option for most karaoke companies would probably be to utilize a third party service like the Harry Fox Agency, um, which often acts as a facilitator between karaoke companies and publishers. So because this type of licensing is so complex, Harry Fox advises car karaoke companies on direct licensing contracts based on what type of user experience the company would like to offer. So because there are so many different uses within that one license, karaoke companies can draft individually individualized agreements based on their own particular user experience that they want to offer the consumer. And then Harry Fox can send out direct licensing agreements to the publisher members um, in order to ensure that karaoke companies are contacting the necessary publishers that they need to be to, securing, uh, to secure the necessary rights for the particular songs that they'd like to use. Um, and so HFA has experience with a wide variety of direct licenses created for different functionality systems and can serve as a great tool for karaoke companies looking to create individual uh, unique experiences for users. So um, using HFA to facilitate direct agreements for specific types of karaoke services allows karaoke companies to effectively reach out to the publishers that they need to reach out to in order to use the songs they want to use and then make sure that you know they're getting those songs licensed and everything is uh, legal and everyone's getting paid. Um, so I've listed up here some of the different offerings that HFA offers through their Slingshot program. First, they offer publisher solicitation. So like I said, um, karaoke companies can send in, you know, what kind of uses they would like to use, uh, what kind of uses will be affected by their um, service. And then HFA can solicit both HFA and non-HFA affiliated publishers regarding direct publisher karaoke licensing offers. So you can talk to HFA about what, you're, what you want your product to offer and then send in the direct licensing agreement that you would like submitted out to all of the publishers who own the songs that you need to license. Um, and then second, HFA offers copyright research. So they can research sound recordings to identify underlying compositions, publisher and ownership shares in order to facilitate solicitation and licensing. So if you all know that you need um, specific songs for your products, then you can contact HFA and they can research, you know, who needs to get paid under those um, who owns those compositions, who needs to get paid, and then who those direct licensing agreements should be set out to, to make sure that you guys are getting the rights from the correct people and that everyone involved is um, getting paid. Okay. And they also offer data matching. So once you start using a song, um, HFA can assist karaoke companies in identifying the compositions licensed under their direct deals and then provide royalty services. 
So HFA can assist karaoke companies in calculating royalties due under the direct deals, help prepare statements for publishers, and distribute royalties. So Connect is a really helpful middleman for everyone involved um, and kind of take the stress off karaoke companies who are trying to reach out to thousands of publishers to get rights and clearances for all of these songs. Um, so at this point, NMPA believes that the best option for karaoke companies would be to work with a company like HFA to utilize their expansive database and relationships with publishers, as well as their knowledge of how to best reach out to these publishers in order to enter into direct licensing agreements that best serve the unique needs of karaoke companies. So I would urge any karaoke company here to reach out to HFA, specifically Lauren Apolito, who is in charge of all of this stuff, and I put her contact information up here, um, in order to learn more about how Harry Fox and Slingshot can help streamline the licensing process. So while the state of the music licensing um, will remain in flux as the music industry learns how to best deal with new technologies and deal with all of the, um, the changes coming for copyright reform in this Congress, um, as well as court decisions and everything, NMPA remains committed to working with you all and, um, and our publisher members in order to find more efficient ways for everyone involved to thrive and create successful working relationships. And then finally, um, for those of you interested in learning more about the Next Great Copyright Act, which I mentioned at the beginning of my presentation, you can get a download of both the Priorities Report and her speech about the Next Great Copyright Act to learn more about um, what kind of reforms might be coming in the future. So finally, um, I'd love to chat with any of you guys about questions or concerns that you have, so please feel free to find me at lunch or after the summit, and I'm happy to talk with any of you. Thank you.